In this video, I'm going to query the posts that are associated with the authenticated user. So if I open the app and I was to authenticate with a user, uh, oh, this is not the finished version of the app. But anyway, I'll just look at the API then. Uh, for every user, there's uh, posts that are associated with it. So I could change the user up here and you get different posts. This is the video where I'm actually going to make these queries inside of the view model and we're going to inject the API and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I want to do though, before we actually make the query is I want to review something. So if we go into auth and uh, UI, then auth, uh, remember this auth resource class that we built? And this is a wrapper class that we use to get more information about when we retrieve the authenticated user, whether they can, they can be either authenticated, you can get an error from the response, set the status to loading or not authenticated. Uh, the Google best practices guide in the architecture components uh, guide in the documentation recommends always using wrapper classes like this when retrieving uh, data from the internet or retrieving it from local caches wherever basically because it lets you give more information to the UI when you feed that live data back so we're going to do the same kind of thing with this new request but we're going to design a different class so let's go into I'm going to go into the the main package and I'm going to create a new class and this one is just going to be called a resource. And if you've taken my local database cache course on my website, I'll just bring it up to kind of remind people. Whoops, that was not my website, codingwithmidget.com. Uh, I have a local database cache course. It's the food recipe app right here. You can click this. Uh, this is actually the REST API with MVVM Retrofit 2. This is the one that comes before it. Uh, the local database cache course right here. I show you how to how to build these classes and a lot of really detailed information about how you can use these classes to provide more information to the to your UI. So anyway, that's uh, that's where you can go get more information if you want more information. So we're going to build a wrapper class for this new request that we're making. And uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it from the source code because it's mostly similar to, it's pretty much the same as what we've done before. So I'm going into the main package. Uh, looks like it's not there. I thought I put it in the main package. Uh, I must have put it somewhere else. Or maybe it's in posts. No, it's not in there. I think the, uh, the, main, the master branch is actually wrong. So this is it right here. In the master branch, it's in the util package, but by the time you watch this, it should be in the UI main package. So make sure to look in there. So anyway, I'm gonna copy this whole class and I'm going to paste this in. So this is mostly the same as the auth resource class that we built. It's not really very much different. Uh, there's just a couple, basically you have a status, you have a data and you have a message. Uh, and the, the three statuses that you have, the three states that you have is success, error, and loading. So that's, it, it's just one less state basically and one's named differently. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. So just kind of a more custom class that's tailored to the request that we're going to be making. Now that we have this wrapper class, I'm going to go into uh, UI, go into posts and go into post view model. And we're going to actually make this request. Um, before I make the request, we need something to set that data to. So I'm going to add a mediator live data object, just like we've done before. It's going to be a resource type with it's wrapped around a, not a user object, a post object. So importing that, and this is just going to be called posts. Now I need to create a method for retrieving that data. So we're going to use RX Java again in this case. So public live data, it's returning live data of type resource post. It's going to be called, I'll call it observe posts. And um, so this is going to be a little different than what we did with the, uh, with the authentication, but it's mostly the same. The only real difference is with the authentication, we observed this pretty much straight up with a method and then had a method that would trigger the query. Whereas this is just going to retrieve the data right away. We're not going to have a method for actually triggering the query. So not much, not much different. So if it equals null, I want to instantiate a new mediator live data. I want to set the value to that loading status. So resource dot loading, cast it to a post object, pass null, because that's, we're just loading. We're just telling the UI that we're loading, going to show a progress bar. Um, let's see here. So then we want to get us get the source. So final live data resource. This is going to be a list of post objects, importing that list. 
I'll call it source equals live data reactive streams, just like we did before. We're converting that Rx object to a live data object. So from publisher, and then in here, we make the request to the API. So main API, get post from user, uh, session manager, we're gonna leverage that session manager here. I need to pass the, the ID of the user, so I'm getting that from the session manager. So session manager, get auth user, dot get value, dot data, dot get ID. So that's how we can get the ID from the session manager. But I will say one thing before I move on, because I know I told you that you shouldn't ever try to request an, an object straight from a live data object that's in another class. Uh, you should always try and observe it. The reason I'm, I'm not observing it here is just because it would add a lot more complexity to the code. Uh, realistically, if, I would, if this was a real app, I would probably have created a single view model and then I would have shared the data in the view model and then I would have had the ID there. But uh, just for, you know, the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna get the ID from the session manager uh, because the point of this view model is I wanna show you how to use another API in a different subcomponent, not, uh, not how to use uh, view models and observe things. So just kind of keep that in mind, you know, this isn't the end of the world if you do something like this, but you should try not to do it. You should always try and observe, uh, like I said before. So anyway, let's, uh, let's finish this request. So the next part is gonna be on error return. So this is if an error happens to happen during the request, if something goes wrong, we pass a new function. And in here, I need to write some logic for what happens. So first of all, I wanna write log E and I wanna pass that throwable just so that we know kind of what happened. I'm gonna create a new post object. I'm gonna set the ID of that post object to negative one, like just like we did before with the user object. Uh, since this is a list though, I need to create an array list of type post. So posts equals new array list. And then I'm gonna add that post, that single post with the negative one ID to that list. And then I'm going to return that list. So this is just a way that I can identify if an error occurred basically. So on error return, the next one is I'm going to use a map just like we did before. So new function. And now this map is either gonna receive that, that post with the negative one ID, or it's gonna receive a, or sorry, it's gonna receive a list with the post with the negative one ID, or it's gonna receive a, a list of posts just like it was supposed to. So if post.size is greater than zero, first of all, just checking if we have any results at all. So if post.get, I wanna get that first one, get ID, if that equals negative one, then I know I have an error. So in that case, I'm gonna return resource.error and I'm going to pass uh, some error message if something went wrong and then pass null for that data, so null. And that's gonna be our error case, Otherwise, if it uh, did work, actually, I don't even need this else statement. I can just go down here and return a successful response, so or a successful resource, so uh, resource dot success, and then pass that post data. And that's going to do everything that we need to. The last step is to subscribe. Whoops, I need to close close that off, and I need to subscribe. So subscribe on a background thread just to make sure that we're doing that request on a background thread. So that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. Now I need to do the same kind of thing that we did before. We want to add that, that source to the mediator live data. So add am I outside of the method here. Oh yeah, it's gotta be in there. So let's see inside here, add source. add the new observer. And now I just want to do posts.set value to that list resource. And I want to remove that source, or remove the source. Uh, not sure why that is giving me an issue. It should be a resource of type list. Did I write this wrong? Yeah, this should be a list. Because remember, we need a list of post objects wrapped around a resource. And this, uh, can I get rid of that? No, I need a new, I need to specify a type here. So I can specify a list of type post. There we go. So that's looking good. The last step is just returning the post at the, at the bottom of the method here. Uh, looks like this also has the wrong type. So this needs to be of type at a list up here. 
So that should be good. Uh, looks, I wonder if I, can I, I don't know if I can zoom out here. Oh, I just shrank the method. Uh, anyway, so that's, there's a lot of code here. It looks like a lot, but um, there's not too much going on. There's nothing that you haven't really seen before. Checking if it's null, instantiating the mediator live data, setting the value to the loading status so that the UI knows that it should be loading, creating that source. This is exactly the same as what we've done before. All of that code is basically identical. It's just using a, po a list a list of post objects instead of using a user object. We still have our error case. We have our map subscribing on the background thread. Nothing new there, just kind of repetitions of what we already done. Uh, adding the source to the mediator live data, setting the value, removing the source, returning that mediator live data. So now we can observe this from the UI. So I'm going to go into uh, post fragment and I'm going to create uh, new method, so private void subscribe observers. And of course, we're not going to actually use this data for anything right now, but I just want to kind of get started using it. So or I want to make sure that the, the query is working. So observe posts. First of all, remove observers. Remember, we want to get view lifecycle owner and make sure to remove those observers. Uh, next is actually doing the observation. So observe, I'll call the observe method. Uh, I need to get the lifecycle owner, get view lifecycle owner. Uh, new observer, so new observer, and now I just want to check and make sure that we're actually able to get that data. So if it doesn't equal null, I just want to log that and print list resource dot data just to make sure. And I'm going to call the subscribe observers method inside of the onCreateView method, and we are ready to test. So I'm going to run this, and we'll check the log to make sure that we're seeing what we're supposed to be seeing. All right, so let's log in. And let's take a look. So let's look at the log here, and there is the data. So unchanged is called from post fragment, and you can see that there is all the posts being printed out. Now it's just printing out the memory addresses because we haven't, you know, uh, called to string or got a, a certain parameter or got a certain index. It's just printing out the entire list of data. The important thing here is that it's there, so we can see that it is working, and we're able to retrieve it. So, so that's going to be it for this video. And now in the next one, we're going to actually use this data and set up the recycler view.